Hello everybody, Maven here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video. Today we're talking about the Immortal Warlock God Mode build. This has got to be one of the strongest builds just in general. Not for Season 18 Arc 3.0, this is a void build. So it's not going anywhere even after Season 18 ends. So what this is based around is in a semi-recent TWAB, Bungie announced that certain melee based exotic armor pieces will now interact with Glaive melees because Glaives count as melee kills. And one of these that really stood out to me was the Karnstein armlets for Warlock. For those who don't know how they work, I'll put a clip on screen right now. So you get a melee kill, you get a buff on the left side of your screen called Vampire's Caress that lasts like around 10 seconds, give or take. There's no timer, Bungie, please fix that. But it gives you, during that whole time, it gives you constant health regen. And that's when you get a melee kill or a glaive melee kill. So you can run around the area slaying out with the glaive and you're getting constant regeneration, no matter what. It's ridiculous. You cannot die. And this build really takes advantage of that that I'm gonna show you today and takes it way over the top. So let's get to it. And as this clip plays out of me sitting here tanking a billion damage, if you are new here and you enjoy Destiny 2 PVE and PVP weapon testing and builds, then you've come to the right place because we do that a lot here. So consider subscribing and dropping a like. And with that, let's break down the build. Now, first things first, I did experiment with all the potential subclasses to pair with this build, but Arc 3.0 doesn't really give you anything other than Spark of Resistance. That's the only useful thing. So I would not really recommend Arc. Now, solar is really not that great either because all of the fragments and the aspects and everything, they're very solar based. They want you to scorch things. They want you to ignite things. And it really has no synergy with the glaive build whatsoever. However, I would recommend going with solar if you're doing higher level content because well of radiance, putting it right on a major or a boss is gonna be really good for your glaive. And also the healing nades could save your life in a pinch. So it's not a bad option if you're doing higher level content. And now stasis honestly is pretty good. It's a decent option. You know, it's pretty fun with the cold snap grenades. Dust fields might be pretty cool. Frost pulse is a good aspect with this. Ice flare bolts is as well. And the combination of glacial harvest with, you know, whisper of rhyme, and you can do something interesting with elemental shards at that point. It's honestly not a bad option. However, there is better and better is going to be Void. Now there's a lot that Void gives you that's very beneficial to this build and we'll talk about it in a second. And by the way, I just wanted to mention that if you are doing your Glaive combos like this, you're doing it wrong. What you have to do is do your Glaive combos like this. A swift two hit combo comes out a lot quicker. To do this, all you have to do is hold block while you're swinging. So as we just mentioned, Karnstein Armlets are the name of the game and our Glaive of choice is going to be the Nezerax Whisper. So there are two main reasons why the Nezerax Whisper is going to be our glaive of choice for this build. And the first of the two is going to be the extrovert origin trait. So it final blows while near multiple combatants or near nightmares restores health, which further adds onto the whole theme of being a God mode infinite healing build. So when you get those final blows while you're surrounded, you get healing. So that is very, very nice. And the second thing is that we are using enhanced demolitionist that gives you an improved amount of grenade energy back when we get final blows with this weapon and that's very important because this is a grenade build and the reason we want our grenades really fast is because we're trying to proc elemental ordinance that gives us a void elemental well when we get a grenade kill and the reason that we want that void elemental well is because we are running three copies of well of tenacity the reason we are running well of tenacity is because it gives us resist times three for five seconds. But we are running this mod here on our helmet called Elemental Time Dilation. So the Elemental Well mods that give you a time limited effect will now stack for each copy of the mod. So with one copy of Well of Tenacity, you get the resist times three for five seconds. With two copies, you get 10 seconds. And with three copies, you get 15 seconds of resistance times three. I'll demonstrate right here. I'm gonna get a grenade kill, pick up that well, and then I get that resistance times three buff for a super long Long duration and any future wells we pick up will reset this duration back up to 15. So constantly getting those grenade kills and picking up those wells are going to make us very tanky while also the glaive is giving us infinite healing and we are just very tough to kill. Now you might be wondering how I'm able to get my grenade charge back so fast when we're only rocking seven discipline, but to be honest, you don't need any discipline investment at all with this build because it all lies in this fragment here called Echo of Exchange. Melee final blows grand grenade energy and that works with glaive melees and I don't know why because there's a lot of 
things like for example on our gloves here uh impact induction it says that causing damage to the melee will reduce your grenade cooldown that doesn't work and there's a lot of other abilities and fragments like that and other subclasses and other characters that say melee this melee that will cause this to happen and it doesn't ever work so for whatever reason echo of exchange does work and it's amazing so take a look here i get that grenade kill i pick up the well and then i get three glaive kills and it fully restores my grenade energy and so that brings us to enhanced demolitionist on our glaive which gives us an improved amount of grenade energy for the final blows of this weapon unfortunately it does not proc off of the glaive melee kills it only procs off of the ranged kills but still that's good for those situations where you have to shoot your glaive and you're going to get a bunch of grenade energy off of that as well so it's just a very good glaive for grenades in general and then when you get that grenade kill it's going to proc our adrenaline junkie giving us that 35 percent damage buff and that is going to massively improve the damage of your glaive projectile and because the demolitionist perk auto reloads your weapon when you throw a grenade that allows us some wiggle room to add extended mag to up our magazine size to seven it doesn't matter that it turns our reload speed to zero because we're going to keep throwing nades and then I might as well mention this, but we're running auxiliary reserves with a shield duration masterwork because glaive blocking is OP. And then needless to say, we are running the aspect feed the void that gives us devour when we get a void ability kill and devour is going to instantly restore our health on any final blow. So that's obviously really good with the theme of God mode and we can extend the duration of that with echo of persistence. And then for the rest of our fragments, we are running echo of undermining. This is our void grenades weaken targets. And since we're chucking grenades back to back to back and we can weaken everything and improve our glaive dps so that's really good and then we're running echo of expulsion just because it's really fun to watch enemies explode although if you want a fragment that's actually going to do something for you you can run echo of reprisal that says that final blows while you're surrounded are going to give you additional super energy so that might actually do something but i just think it's fun to watch things explode and now for the rest of the weapons, it's really up to your personal preference. You can swap it out accordingly if you need champion mods or whatever. But this is a setup that I found pretty successful just for general play. So I went with a kinetic scout rifle because the glaive you're going to be using for pretty much anything, anything that's like within sprinting distance of you, you're going to use your glaive. So the scout rifle is just for those extremely long distances. And now the glaive with major spec plus echo of undermining can shred most things. But if there's like match game shield or if there's like a bomb or whatever um, you can use echo of undermining with the galler horn to nuke anything that the glaive cannot however i did want to give an honorable mention to this potential loadout instead of the galler horn you can go with a corrective measure that has demolitionist and adrenaline junkie which really fits the whole grenade build aspect very well and that free up your exotic slot so that you can run wither horde and then wither horde paired with the glaive paired with echo of undermining is a really great at melting bosses and now that's pretty much it for the build, but I did want to mention one last thing is that if you felt that Well of Tenacity wasn't really working out too well for you and you didn't really feel the resist kicking in, that what you could run instead is a copy of Bountiful Wells that says that your Elemental Well mods that create Elemental Wells will now stack for each additional copy. And then you can then run three copies of Elemental Ordnance so that when you get that Void Grenade kill, you're going to make four Void Elemental Wells, which is going to give you a massive chunk of ability energy back and then you can run a copy of Seeking Wells so that those wells will just track towards you and you can get a ton of grenade energy. So it'll help the consistency of the grenade aspect of the build even more if you didn't like that resist times three buff. So that's going to do it for the build. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. And now we're going to show some more gameplay with this build in a moment, including in a legend loss sector, just to show that the higher level enemies don't even hurt you. But also the clip you're seeing on screen right now is during Master Catch Crash. And if you've done Master Catch Crash, you know that especially this room is absolutely brutal. The enemies hit hard. There's enemies everywhere and they're extremely tanky for whatever reason. And this is also well below power for us at the time. Yet this build was able to withstand it no problem. It was very good in Master Catch Crash. Anyways, we're going to show that Legend Lost Sector footage in a second, so stay tuned, but I'm going to do my outro here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Those two actions really help the algorithm and the video's performance. And if you are new and you enjoy Destiny 2 PvE and PvP weapon testing and builds, then you've come to the right place because we do that a lot here. So consider subscribing. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.